Some alarming reports from the skies over Kentucky. The FAA says three planes have received laser strikes in the last day. A pilot telling us about the dangers of lasers. You don't have drugs near your children. Let's be honest. A baby's mother arrested because police say she had drugs in her baby's crib. A review board has made its recommendation for some controversial statues in downtown Lexington. This is WKYT News at 11. Good evening. It now has the attention of federal investigators. More than 20 aircraft around this country reported laser strikes in just the last 24 hours. And investigators say three of the reports came from right here in Kentucky. One of them was tonight, northwest of Lexington in the Frankfurt area. Garrett Weimer is tracking the investigation. It's our top story at 11. The FAA says the plane was 34 miles northwest of Lexington on its way to Chicago when a laser hit the cockpit. I talked to Officer Don about the dangers that poses for pilots. It literally illuminates the entire cockpit, making it impossible to see, all from that little bitty green light. The FAA reports 20 laser strikes Wednesday night alone. That includes a New York City news chopper that caught it all on camera. Two planes that night were hit over Kentucky, one in Covington and one in Danville, a Delta jet on its way to Lexington. Officer Don was hit with a laser last week. The, the cockpit just lights up, just this brilliant illumination in the cockpit, this green laser, everything turns green, and you can't see your instruments. A third plane was hit around 6.30. None of the pilots reported injuries, but it's not just a prank. Pilots say it's serious. If you own a laser, Look, you, you know if you've had a shot at you what it does, so why would it not do that to a pilot? With it getting darker sooner, Officer Don says we'll likely continue to see a spike in laser strikes. It's a matter of time before it's going to get someone hurt. Uh, that's just the bottom line. Now, shining a laser at an airplane is a federal crime. We're told the slew of recent laser strikes are under investigation. At Bluegrass Airport in Lexington, Garrett Weimer. WKYT. The FAA says there have been more than 5,300 laser strikes around the country so far this year. Tonight, sheriff's deputies have arrested a baby's mother and babysitter. They say they found marijuana and a glass pipe in the child's crib. The Laurel County Sheriff's Office charged 20 year old Autumn Martin and 43 year old Aaron Byers with child endangerment and drug offenses. New at 11, Monique Blair talks to neighbors about what police say they found. On Wednesday night around 5.15, the Corbin Manor apartment managers were doing their monthly apartment checks and spraying for bugs when they smelled what they thought was marijuana coming from one of the units. She discussed a smell, a faint aroma, I guess, and she was pretty upset about it. The Laurel County Sheriff's Department then responded. There are police everywhere. Deputies determined 20-year-old Autumn Martin admitted to smoking marijuana right before the deputies came to her apartment. Deputies found a glass jar filled with marijuana and also a glass pipe used to smoke marijuana inside Martin's five-month-old daughter's crib. Now a neighbor who goes by the name Neen is upset this happened. Well, I do advocate for medicinal marijuana. But to put your stuff as an adult in your child's belongings or have it near your child, that's just dangerous. Deputies say Martin told them 43 year old Aaron Byers was babysitting her daughter while she was in the bedroom smoking marijuana. Both Martin and Byers are lodged here in the Laurel County Detention Center, and each of them faces several charges. Social services was brought in, and Martin's five month old daughter was placed with her relatives. You don't have drugs near your children. Let's be honest. In Laurel County, Monique Blair, WKYT. We did reach out to Martin to hear her side of the story, but she declined our request for a jailhouse interview. New tonight, a man who applied to be a police officer in Michigan turned out to be wanted in central Kentucky. The Wayne County Sheriff's Office in Michigan arrested 25-year-old John Rose. Deputies say Rose applied to be a police officer in Detroit back in September. While doing background checks, they say they found Rose had a warrant out of Madison County, Kentucky for sexual abuse, sodomy, and rape. The warrant had been issued in March but had not been entered into a national database. Sheriff's deputies arrested Rose 
office after asking him to come to their office to complete application paperwork. Tomorrow, hundreds of people expected to gather for the funeral of a Jessamine County paramedic. John Mackey died Monday, days after being hit by a car while on duty. Today, family and friends and co workers paid their respects at his visitation. His chief said Mackey was one of the smartest people he knew and always did what he could to save lives. He was a servant. In every sense of the word, he was a servant. And he served his guys, he served his community, uh, and he gave his life in service. John Mackey's funeral will be held tomorrow afternoon at 2 at Bethel Harvest Church in Nicholasville. There will not be a procession because he is being cremated. The governor has ordered flags at all state buildings to be lowered to half staff tomorrow in John Mackey's honor. A Danville police officer has been placed on paid administrative leave after investigators say he confronted students on a Boyle County school bus. The incident can be seen on cell phone video. Investigators say Officer Ryan Hunley was trying to find those responsible for pulling his daughter's hair. They say while off duty, he pulled over the bus, jumped on board, and confronted Joyce Coon's 13 and 15 year old children. It's not okay for. A, a police officer or just anybody to get on a school bus and and just pick a pair of children out you know whether whether they were innocent or guilty of bothering his little girl it still gives him no right to do something like that he should have went to the principal and something should have happened Coon says her children did nothing wrong. Boyle County Schools say they're working with Danville Police to investigate the rationale for the stop. Danville Police say Officer Hunley reported the incident himself. He's on leave pending the outcome of the investigation. You can see the entire video of that incident on WKYT.com. Well, we felt it out there. Gusty winds have been blowing across the bluegrass today, and that will lead to a chilly Friday. Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey has an early look at the forecast. Chris? Chilly indeed, Sam. That colder air slowly but surely filtering into the bluegrass state this afternoon and evening. And those gusts early this uh, morning, around 40 to 45 miles an hour into parts of central and eastern Kentucky. That big windmaker, by the way, is now across parts of the Great Lakes into southern sections of Canada. Cold front that made its way through last night, early this morning, well off to our south and southeast. There's one more little push of some colder air. Rain and snow behind that. We're not worried about that. You can see how the wind flow is to take that more from west to east across the Great Lakes. So right now across the Bluegrass State, still on the breezy side, those winds are coming in from the west with temperatures that have been a little slow to drop into the low and mid 40s as of now because of those same gusty winds. Frankfurt, we are the cold spot right now at 43 degrees. Most areas tomorrow morning, mid and upper 30s for the trip into work and school. Lunchtime, mid to upper 40s. We'll flirt with 50 degrees for the drive back home tomorrow afternoon as we kick off the weekend. And it's a weekend that will have some colder winds. And then we focus on another big storm that takes aim at Kentucky into that early uh, half of next week, guys. Seven day forecast gets active again. We'll break it down when I get back in a few minutes. New tonight, an arts review board has recommended two statues of Confederate leaders be moved from the area of the old Fayette County Courthouse. But our news partners at the Herald Leader report tax credits the city wants to use to help pay for overhauling the old courthouse may not allow moving the statues. The tax credits are designed to preserve historic structures. Earlier this year, Mayor Jim Gray asked the review board to look at the placement of the John Hunt Morgan and John C. Breckenridge statues. Tonight, we've learned a Noah's Ark theme park in Grant County is scheduled to open next summer. Answers in Genesis, the Christian ministry behind the Ark Encounter Park, announced today it will open July 7th. Park leaders say it will create 20,000 jobs and bring in $4 billion over 10 years. Answers in Genesis hopes the project will be part of the state's tax rebate program for tourist attractions. The project received an $18 million tax incentive before the state withdrew it last year. We would like to see a ruling from the judge because, you know, there's been a lot of uh, talk out there from some of the secular groups and accusations. So I think it's really good that it's in the courts and let a judge make the decision on the basis of the law. In a statement, Governor elect Matt Bevin said he supports the project, and if Kentucky can legally provide financial incentives, he supports doing that. 
Tonight, investigators are trying to figure out who stole a 2,000 pound generator from the top of Kentucky's tallest mountain. It belongs to East Kentucky Power. The generator was stolen from Black Mountain in Harlan County. Company leaders say the generator is worth $25,000. They say the thieves traveled along miles of rough gravel roads to get to the generator. Police are investigating. We was able to obtain serial numbers, model numbers. So, uh, Anywhere it's located throughout the country, if the numbers are in, it would, it would show up as being a stolen, a stolen item. East Kentucky Power is offering a $5,000 reward for anyone with information leading to the arrest and conviction of those involved. New tonight, a Lexington man accused of killing his mother earlier this year has been indicted. The Herald Leader reports, along with murder, a grand jury also indicted Jack Clemens on evidence tampering and credit card fraud charges. Back in July, Lexington police found his mother, Shirley, dead in her home on River Park Circle. They say she was asphyxi asphyxiated. Police later arrested Jack Clemens in Kansas after a chase. New tonight, a judge in Utah has ordered a same-sex couple to give up their foster child. Becky Pierce and April Hoagland are legally married, and they plan to adopt the baby. But the judge ordered them to give up the baby, saying he's seen studies that claim children do worse in homosexual homes than in heterosexual homes. The couple says the judge even ignored pleas from the baby's biological mother to grant them custody of the baby. She's happy. She's bonded. And now you're going to take that all away from her. She has to start over. Utah Child and Family Services is also fighting for the couple. The agency says the couple passed rigorous background checks, and state law allows any legally married couple to be foster parents. Tonight, a Louisville man is asking for help finding some family treasures he fears could be lost forever. William Flights says that hundreds of his childhood photos were kept in his mother's storage locker in Richmond. But she fell behind on the rent without telling anyone else in the family. Flight says that the locker was later auctioned, but the storage company wouldn't tell him who bought it. He says he just wants the pictures. I'm willing to pay, you know, up to so much or up to the month of the storage price for the pictures. Uh, Flight says that the storage company uh, says that they gave, give renters who owe money 75 days to make payments before they hold an auction. New tonight, skateboarders have a new place to practice their skills here in Lexington. This afternoon, Lexington city leaders cut the ribbon on the new Berry Hill Skate Park on Buckhorn Drive. The park features a flow bowl, snake run, and street section, along with stairs and rails. Skateboarders say they're happy city leaders created a park just for them. Just how grateful we are that they actually got together and built the park because we've been trying to do it for a long time, and it feels like it. It took a little bit, but we finally got there. Lexington also has a small skate pad for beginners at Kirk Levington Park, and the city is now designing another skate pad for Valley Park. So great to have those you mm -hmm. know, kids have a place to go, Look, and adults, I guess. Looks like a lot of fun.